Hey guys, this is Chef Vineet Bhatia and this is the very first guest series which we are doing. We are inviting our guests from all over the world to come and cook in my kitchen here in my home. So here we have Taris. Taris is one of our biggest regulars in our restaurant. He probably has been to almost all our restaurants except the one in probably Mauritius. Isn't that true? That's true. Taris, welcome to my home. Welcome to my studio. Thank you, Chef. It's a pleasure being here. Likewise, Taris. Taris, what do you like about Indian food and what you don't like? Um, it's, a, it's an interesting question, Chef. Um, I would say, obviously, it's the depth and the spiciness of the ingredients. Um, it pr provides a really unique experience when you eat. Mm. And uh, it's just an interesting, just an interesting cuisine. Um, coming from Eastern Europe, our food is really bland. Yes. And <laughs> Indian Indian cuisine brings a, a, a very beautiful, you know, uh, palettes that we can explore uh, at the kitchen. You know, talking of Eastern Europe, we had a place back in Russia, way back in 2005 to 2010, and I must say the Russians loved the food because they were not used to having spice flavors done so well and lightly, which is not overpowering in chili. Yeah. but in terms of flavors. So I think they really like that kind of a stuff. Is that same for you from where you come from? Well, for us, uh, the spice taste ingredient is dill, unfortunately. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, I moved to uh, Canada 20 years uh, ago and you know I got, I got an opportunity to try different cuisines from around the world and Indian was one of them. So are you okay with the, the spiciness or the chili factor or is it only about the aromatics do you like? I absolutely love spicy. Oh wow, that's yeah. a very different uh, White skin, <laughs> who enjoys good spice uh, Indian food. And it's, yeah. it's, it's an addiction. Once you start eating chili and spices, initially maybe it hits you. But yeah. once you get used to it, then you crave for it more and more. Yes, my experience was the first time, you know, it, you, you, you slowly build it up. In the beginning, yeah. it feels really hot. But then once you open it up to it, it becomes very addictive. And uh, Okay, one more question for you. Give me your top five things which you like of from Indian cuisine. Top five things. Uh, Probably the most typical would be butter chicken. <laughs> yes, has to be. Uh, I love choli. That's something I actually oh. learned how to cook with myself at home. Very nice. Um, I love uh, nuns. They're okay. The Come reason because because it's always prepared fresh and it's always cooked on the spot. Um, any type of uh, curry goat. Oh, nice. And nice strong fish flavors. A chicken vindaloo will be on top of the list as oh, well. Oh, so you are into spices. <laughs> yeah, I have into spices. So yeah. he's got butter chicken, he's got chicken vindaloo, he's got chole, he's got naan, and he's got curry goat. It's more like a rogan josh or a lamb masala. I think for me personally also, I think a goat is the best meat because that's got strong flavors to it. It takes flavors quite well, holds flavors well. And a nice stew, like a goulash or something, mm. you dip it with bread and have it, or even with rice, I think it's just fantastic. Oh, I love that aspect, especially eating with the, you know, with the hands, especially the naan. That's, yeah. It's a very personal experience. It is. No desserts? Uh, desserts? I forgot the name, but it's a, it's a sweet bowl with a yogurt inside of it. Okay, no, that's rasmalai. It's go. got milk. One, it's yeah. a white dumpling poached with milk. So you got that one and you have a different one which is called as rasgulla. And the one which is deep fried is called gulab jamun, okay. which is nice, heavy, sugary and rich. Beautiful. Yeah. But today I'm going to do something very different. I'm going to teach Taras how to make a chicken tikka. Let's do it. Yeah, but chicken tikka <laughs> with my twist, with my difference. Oh, what, what is your, uh, what's your twist? Well, I will show that to you now. Awesome. Let's Shall we get started? Yeah. Brilliant. Ready to go. As Taras is our guest today, I am not going to cook. I'm going to make sure Taras cooks today. You okay for it, Taras? Yeah, I'm absolutely fine with it. Uh, he's confident. I love that. We <laughs> love to cook. So. We love people who cook. For me, that's more important because it's very satisfying to find men cooking in your own homes. And I'm assuming you cook at home. A lot. So what do you cook at home? Um, to be honest, uh, the, the cuisine differs. I do the Russian, Ukrainian, mm. Thai, a little bit of Indian, a lot of French and Italian. Fantastic. So. He is a multi-scale, does well, almost all the cuisines. But what is your wife's favorite thing she, she likes from your hand? I I, actually, she does enjoy curries a lot. Oh, good. Um, and Italian, because she, she likes all sorts of spaghetti dishes. So I would say um, spaghetti bolognese or mm -hmm. carbonara would be the top of the list. And I love the, the fact that it's like carbonara is just the ingredients. It is, it is lovely. I, I enjoy making that. Uh, that is very easy and very tasty. So do you put cream in a carbonara or don't? No. There's the no classic cream. way. That's classic way. Well, there you go. That's an acid test to have a carbonara. It's got no cream. It's just egg and cheese. And if cooked well, it is fantastic. And of course, pancetta. 
to of go course. there. Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that is the secret ingredient. No, that so is the right ingredient. I am only hoping that Taris takes this dish and also uses this in his own home at some stage and you cook it for your family. Yeah. That's my sincere desire. Well, yeah. I, would, I would love to. There we go. Okay, first thing. We're going to first start by marinating a chicken. You know, when you do kebabs or tikkas especially, they always two parts to a marinade. A lot of people make the mistake by only doing it one marinade. They always two parts to the marinade and I'll tell you why. The first thing, I want you to hold that. Sure. Uh, transfer that into the bowl. So I've got chicken breast here, but you know, it's a personal preference. A lot of people like to use chicken thighs. That's perfectly fine. Only thing with the, the breast is it cooks quite fast and it's lean meat. Mm -hmm. It's got no fat. So you don't spend too much time cutting it and cleaning off all the fat. But if you like the legs or the thighs, perfectly okay. What about the flavor? There's legs are better. <laughs> There's no. a lot of... Yeah, yeah. The legs, the, the, legs, the legs are personally, I like my to have, have it breast, uh, the legs and especially on the bone. Of course. I think they've got more flavor to it. Yeah. But most people like to use chicken breast in the Western world because it is easier. It is easier, yeah. And it's white meat, so it doesn't look uh, raw. Like the leg meat can look. Okay, two parts to marinate. The first one is lemon juice. You can pour that in. Ginger garlic paste. There you go. So it's just equal parts of ginger, equal parts of garlic, mm -hmm. a little water, blitz into a blender, and you can keep it into your fridge. It'll last you for two weeks, won't go bad. Okay. Or if you have an Indian supermarket, you can even buy it in a bottle. It works well. Salt. Without salt, there is just no flavor. Now again, you don't need to buy a very expensive salt here. A table salt is fine. But if you want to use sea salt or Himalayan salt, feel free. What do we want? Now, the reason why you add lemon juice and ginger garlic paste, do you know why? No, well, that's interesting. Why? It's the first marinade because both the lemon juice and the garlic and the ginger are astringent. So when you rub it onto the chicken or any protein, it opens up the pores. Now, when you're opening up the pores of the protein, what that does it, it opens it up in a way to absorb more flavors in. So when we add our second marinade, all the flavors will go into the chicken breast and it'll have a much intense flavor. Mm -hmm. Most people skip this process. Uh, do you get a nice massage? Or yeah, a... use a spoon is fine. Sure. We don't want to get your hands dirty. But just move it out. So basically you put this into a massage together and you leave it for around 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. at room temperature for it to just break down slightly. If we give it more time, it doesn't make any difference? Uh, no? Not, it won't make a difference. It'll just have a slightly discolored thing to it. It might turn slightly whitish. Because with the lemon juice, it'll also begin to cook. It, slowly, yeah. Slowly. It's like when you do shiviche. That's right, yeah. You add the acidity in that, and the color changes of the fish. It becomes slightly opaque and whitish because it cooks in there. So you can actually have raw prawns or raw fish mm -hmm. when you have the shiviche. Same principle applies. It cooks you through. You don't want to cook it through right now. Because sometimes when I marinate meat, I'll have to keep it for a couple of days. But yeah, then... that is we do with the second part of marinade. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we got this first one done. Now we get on with the second part of the marinade. This is a yogurt based marinade. Now, classically in Indian cuisine, there are two types of marinades. In fact, I think any cuisine is a yogurt based marinade, it's an oil based marinade. There's also a third one, which is a water based marinade. But that's very different altogether. Is there specific oils that you prefer? Is yeah, we prefer uh, unflavored oil or neutral oil. So a corn oil, a sunflower oil, wow. or a light olive oil is fine. Canola. Canola will In work. Canada. Well. Yeah, it works. Yeah. That's fine. Don't use a flavored oil like an avocado oil or a sesame mm -hmm. oil. They're more for dressings. Okay. And you don't need to use an extra virgin olive oil. That's more for salads. It's the first press, the cold press. But any other kind of uh, unflavored or neutral oil is fine for that. Does it make a difference depending on the heat you're cooking? Because some oils are better at... If you have, yeah, if you have oil which you've got a high temperature resistant, that's better. Because it's going to go into an oven to cook for a long temperature, mm -hmm. at a longer period of time. We're not going to deep fry, we're going to bake it in the oven or rather roast it. Mm -hmm. So it is fine. Awesome. Okay, so the chicken is on the side. So and you said you it's, a, it's a twist. But... It's coming. Oh, it's coming. It is coming. <laughs> yogurt. Oh, yeah, yogurt. Put the yogurt into the bowl, all of it. Try and use the thick yogurt and not the thin yogurt. So you can also use a Greek yogurt, for example. So how many percent uh, would you say? As fatty as possible. Oh, yes. The higher the fat, the better it is because when you have fat into your food, it sticks to your lips and that gives a very nice mouthfeel. So when you eat, it tastes quite nice because it sticks to your mm -hmm. lips. So when it you have a risotto yeah, yeah. or you have an ice cream, it's full of fat, it sticks to your lips. 
So whatever sticks to your lip also sticks to your hips. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, it, but, but enhance the flavor. But enhance the flavor. So small quantity, not too much. Okay. In this, we will add chili, red chili powder. Can we use any other? Or, type of you can. Yes, you can use cane pepper. You can also use smoked paprika powder. Even that works fine. Mm -hmm. You go to whisk it up, please. Or the spoon, or you want to whisk it, okay? And salt. You can be a bit more firmer with that to break it down. Now, if you look at the color, it is slightly reddish. Mm -hmm. It's because of the chili. Right, mix it quite nicely. Okay, you asked for the twist? Yeah. Now comes the twist. I'm going to use mustard paste in this. So you can use a grainy mustard or you can use any of the mustard. I'm using the French mustard paste. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just think mustard works extremely well with the chicken and with kebabs. Uh, how many spoons do you usually have? It's for one and a half tablespoon. I've got almost 400 grams of chicken breast. So I would say two very really large chicken breasts. Thinly sliced. Mm -hmm. Again, when you're cooking at home, try and use uh, cuts of meat which are thin slices and not too thick. So when you have a large piece of uh, chicken, it takes too long to cook. And it should all be the same size, so it's much easier. Mm -hmm. That is done. And then, one second, I'm going to add in, uh, drizzle some oil. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to mix that up. That's ready. Okay. Now, we're going to add the second marinade onto the chicken. Good, we don't like to waste, so it's made it oh, yeah. nice and clean. You can mix that up. So now we had the first marinade mm -hmm. of ginger garlic paste, lemon juice and salt. We left it for 10 minutes approximately, and then we had a second marinade. Now, if you want to add any herbs in that, you can add herbs. If you want to make it green in color, you can add coriander paste, you can add parsley paste, you can add herb paste or puree, and it becomes slightly green, which works fine. If you want to have it a, a deeper red in color, you can even add sun dried tomatoes to that. It gives a very nice flavor. Now, tomatoes also works very well because it's got a nice umami to it. And when you add sun dried tomatoes to the chicken, it gives a very, very nice flavor. What about tomato paste? Uh, tomato paste, you can, but if you're adding tomato paste, lightly cook it into a pan with a little oil because the canned tomatoes have got uh, preservative mm -hmm. and chemicals. You need to get those flavors away. They will not cook in the oven. So you just slightly cook that into the pan with a little bit of oil or butter. So the raw flavors of the uh, chemical goes off mm -hmm. and they're taken away and then you add it. Because I find the tomato paste sometimes adds like a little bit density to it. It adds density, yeah. especially when you have yogurt, which is quite thin, mm -hmm. the tomato paste will make it thick. Yeah. And it gives it like a binding. I do that sometimes when I cook uh, either uh, some kind of sauces. Yeah. It, it, it helps to. It helps. It, 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 but in sauces, what happens, Alice, is because you cook it for so long, mm -hmm. it thickens automatically. Mm -hmm. It takes a, it's a process of cooking it. So you are cooking it. But in the oven, in the tandoor, or into a grill or a barbecue, you, you won't cook it for that long. It's intense heat. So rawness will not come. So the best way to avoid that is to slightly cook it into a pan with a little amount of fat. So that flavor is removed, the raw flavor, and then you add it into your marinade and it will work fine. Awesome. So what's next? You think it's done? Uh, no, I, I would say that there should be more uh, spices going in there. Okay, <laughs> there it is. There comes the twist. Okay. Now this will have a tempering. Mm -hmm. Now tempering is something where you heat up the oil and you add spice and then that flavors the dish. So if you, the dish has got a mustard flavor, it's only got a mustard paste, but I'm going to intensify this with black mustard seeds. Mm -hmm. So I've got black mustard seeds, which I'm going to use now for the tempering. Mm -hmm. Now again, mustard seeds are of three types. There is a black mustard, there is a red mustard, and there is a yellow mustard. Yeah, I only have to use yellow. Yeah, yellow is generally for salads. It has the least amount of flavor. Mm -hmm. The most flavors are in these. And there's a trick of extracting the flavors off with oil. I'm going to show that to you next. Okay, chef. So what are we doing next? We're going to cook mustard seeds. And why are we so, cooking them? When you cook your seeds uh, or any spice, they have natural oils and enzymes. So you have to cook them to get the best flavors out. And they only react with heat. Now again, when you're actually cooking them, there are two different styles of making them. You can either roast them mm -hmm. or broil them into a pan on the dry heat, or you add it into oil or into any fat. So when you cook your spice into oil or fat or into heat, it releases its natural flavors and enzymes. Mm -hmm. And that flavor has to be captured. 
Uh, if you're doing a dry powder as such, say cumin or something as such, or fennel seed, when you roast it, they become uh, dry. And then you blitz it to a rolling pin or to a spice grinder, the aromas are released. Mm -hmm. So that's how you make a garam masala powder. I usually use a mortar. You use a mortar, it's better. Old school. But you know, we, we are old school. For home, it's very good to use mortar and pestle. <laughs> but when you have 150 guests a night to do, it's impossible. It is impossible. But this is going to be a slight variation. I'm going to use oil. Do so I have I'm to make going it to, really hot? Yeah, you need to make the pan hot. And as the pan heats up, you add a little oil in it. You don't want it to get smoking hot, but you want it just about warm or mm -hmm. hot enough for the spice to pop open and burst. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a thing like a mustard seed, when you add it into hot oil, it pops open, it crackles. Mm -hmm. And as it crackles and it bursts open, all the flavors are released into the oil. So you capture the flavors within the oil and the oil becomes a medium to transfer the flavors into your dishes. So normally we use a technique to temper dal or lentils or the last with some spice powder, some chili and you pour it onto the dal or onto yogurt. So the yogurt or the lentil gets all the flavors in. So I'm using the same principle with mustard seeds. What I'm also going to use is a spice powder. Okay. Turmeric. Turmeric. Or yeah. curcuma. It gives a very nice, that's getting hot, so I'm going to reduce it down. It gives a very nice yellow color, a natural dye or natural color. But it's also very good medicinally for your body, for your stomach. It's a yes. great antitoxin. It uh, is excellent. excellent. It is excellent. Yeah. So I've got this oil hot and the best way is to feel the heat in the pan. Want to put your hand up? Little down. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> it's pretty hot. It is hot. So it is hot. I usually drop a little bit of water to hear it crackling. Yeah. If it's crackling, I if don't it's know fine, it yeah. Or you just put your hand yeah. in to so be used to it. So we don't take a chance in restaurants and hotels to put water because it can splutter. <laughs> So we just put your hand in, you can see yeah. the smoke is nice and hot, I will reduce the heat down. Now this is a very quick technique, mm -hmm. literally add the spice, it will burst, add the turmeric powder. The turmeric powder is raw, it needs to cook and the oil cooks with the heat and then you transfer it onto the chicken. What will happen is all the color will be released into the oil, it will mm -hmm. turn nice and yellow. Ready to go? And we go fast, right? Yeah. You're going to, don't you stir it. Well, you see it popping? Yeah. Then goes in the spice powder, stir it now. And put it down. That out. was quick. That was quicker than yeah. that. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Can you help you? Yeah, all that goes in. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it done. So this is now ready. And you just... Mix it up? Yeah, just going to mix that up. And you see the color? Yeah, it's beautiful yellow. It picks up that wonderful yellow color. And that's the natural color of turmeric. But what is also done, is that the oil has now held all the flavor of the turmeric and the mustard seed. And it gives the dish a very nice gloss. Mm -hmm. The oil coats the chicken. So when you're going to cook this dish, it seals all the flavors in. And because we had them in the first marinade, the pores had opened up, and then you put a second marinade and the tempering. So all these flavors go right into the chicken to give it a very nice. Now if you're a vegetarian, for example, you can use the same principle with say cauliflower or with boiled potatoes. So you boil your cauliflower, you boil your potatoes or your broccoli. Or, or chickpeas if you have, work? Uh, chickpeas will not work well because chickpeas small. are too small and tiny. Mm -hmm. I mean chickpeas can only work if you mix it up and boil chickpeas, mix it together it's, and put I them in the oven. Oh, okay. It will become slightly like a stewish type, but you have to cook it for a little longer to dry them out. Mm -hmm. Everything can work That's as true. long as you enjoy eating it. Yeah. Okay, this is done. Now, traditionally this is left in to marinate for overnight mm -hmm. or if not at least six to eight hours. Now I don't have the luxury of six to eight hours. I'm going to actually put them into the oven right now. and cook it now. So again, there's a trick of how to actually cook in the oven. If you can pass in the tray. Uh, now this is again a very simple uh, way of uh, roasting in the oven. And why are we using this? Okay, good question. Normally what people do at home, they have a, a roasting tray. They add the chicken on top or in, and they put them in the oven <laughs> or a tin foil. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it saves you time for cleaning up. Yeah. It works. <laughs> yeah. But what that does is it cooks in the heat and into the own, the stock or the sauce mm -hmm. and it becomes very watery. You almost boil it. It almost boil mm -hmm. or braise it. It's not really a kebab. It's not really a tikka or a grill. Mm -hmm. So this one works well because the extra marinade drips down. The dry heat moves around in the oven and it cooks the chicken on all sides. So what you get is a very nice kind of a flavored dish with flavors intact. So it's not really boiled, it's more like a grill or a barbecue. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And it won't burn. 
and you won't burn, yeah. hopefully not. So all I do at this stage is, now if you want to add any herbs, you know, you would add parsley, you would add rosemary, you would add oregano, you would add coriander, it's endless. What if we can use this at the end maybe to give it a little bit of color? Yes, you can. If you're using say herbs, yeah. you should always use the stems at this stage. So like coriander stems. I always throw them out. I no, no, don't. They have, they have the best <laughs> unless flavor. I'm them, unless I'm grinding them, I always, yeah. use, I always use the leaves. The stems are always put in the marinade because they give it the, by the crunch. They have more, and they probably have more flavor. And they have. So you know, as you go lower onto the base of the, uh, the herb, mm -hmm. you've got more intense flavor. The roots are right there. So when you take out the dirt and you wash up, chop it up and add it in. Okay, I'll do that not next all, time. Not all the herbs. Don't try and use mint because it's too woody. My wife is always giving me a hard time for throwing out the stems. Oh. Now, if she sees that, then... Oh, use them for a stock. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to get my hands dirty. I'll do that for you. All you do is... You take the pieces of chicken breast and... on the grill. And this will all... Get golden this will all get nice. So you see already, I mean this is literally done and kept for not even five minutes and look at the color. It's such a nice vibrant yellow. If I leave that overnight and then you cook it in the oven, it is going to be far better. Does it take less time to cook it if you leave it for longer in the fridge? No. No? Not really. It will take more flavors in. Yeah. Uh -huh. But always, uh, it is best, if you take me, if you keep me marinate, keep it for at least six hours mm -hmm. for the flavors to go in. It softens the meat, it marinates it. The whole idea of marinating is not just adding flavor, but also making the meat tender mm -hmm. and making it soft. Now, if you have something like a, a red meat, it takes longer to cook. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you would add something more into the dish to make it a bit more tender. So you probably add say a raw mango or say papaya or a pineapple juice into the marinade because that cuts the tissues off. Is it the, because of acidity? Yeah, it cuts the tissues off and breaks it down. Mm -hmm. So it cooks faster. Or if you want to use, you can also use a nutmeg powder. So, so I usually use, uh, does it make sense, then uh, like a soy sauce or you some can, kind of vinegar? But yes, you can. Juice? You can use malt vinegar. It will work well. Malt vinegar is very good. But again, they have a slight flavor of their own. Of course, So yeah. if you like the astringent That's and the citric flavor, it's fine. Use that. It's great for Mexican dishes. Yeah? Yeah, I love using soya for marinating my meat. Yeah. I mean, I love soya too. I'm going to leave this, I'm going to let that two pieces for my meal next time. Mm -hmm. But right. you see that? The colors are quite nice, it's nice and vibrant. Now, when you put them in the oven, there is one thing we must remember. You know what that is? Preheat. Yes. <laughs> preheat, always preheat. <laughs> Spot on. Always preheat the oven. What's the temperature? This one goes at 180 Celsius degrees right? centigrade or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I was about to say, what about for American friends? Yeah, 350 degree Fahrenheit mm -hmm. for North American people who are watching this. And it goes for approximately from anything from 15 to 18 minutes to cook. Or until the chicken is cooked through. Mm -hmm. Now because they're all the similar cuts of meat, the similar size, they cook very evenly. If you have large chunks of meat and small chunks of uh, pieces there, they don't cook evenly. So always try and cut it in a similar size. Yeah, that's a great tip. Size. Otherwise it'll never cook yeah. the same. Also, when you're cooking, in, I mean, when you're putting it in the fridge to marinate, for six hours or for overnight, when you're going to cook them, always take it out 30 minutes before cooking and get it room temperature. Because you don't want to put something very cold into a hot oven, then the, all the water is taken out. Mm -hmm. It'll sweat the water out instantly and become very dry. So bring it to room temperature and then put it in the oven. That applies to all the food that you take out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Set to go in the oven? Yeah, let's go. There we go. Okay, Taras, here we are. We've got our mustard chicken tikka. It's a beautiful oh, color. It's a lovely color and all natural. It's just turmeric with the oil and that gives you all the lovely colors. And the black specks are all the mustard seed. Now, because it's gone onto a wire rack, it cooks all through and through each side. So the very few droppings on the tray is because the yogurt was thick. Mm -hmm. If you use a thin yogurt, it would have fallen down. And if you put it onto the tray directly, it would have been like a messy affair. So I always like to put it onto a wire rack, you get a very nice finish to it. As juicier. As juicier. Now you can have this on its own with some salad leaves, with some relish, with some chutney, it works fine. But I'm going to make it into a main course, like a meal for you. Mm -hmm. Well, before we plate it, uh, may I try it? No, try it together as a complete dish. All right. Is it okay? Yes. Yeah, sure. I want you to try as a complete dish, not just on its own. So I want to keep on the side. Always when you grill your food or cook them in the oven, let it rest for a short time the meat becomes softer. 
it works well mm-hmm. it needs to rest and break down okay i love ceramics i love plates so i'm going to have this beautiful plate where i'm going to serve the chicken tikka in now i've made a little risotto with the brown rice so i've got this and all the way it says the risotto uh, i haven't used any cream or any cheese here it is just brown rice soaked for half an hour into warm water drained off and then cooked with vegetable stock some salt and chili powder mm-hmm. and you get this lovely rich rice but instead of putting cream and cheese i have used yogurt interesting yeah so there's no butter there's no cream there's no cheese it is just thick yogurt maybe 2 to 1/2 tablespoon of yogurt to give it a nice moistness man because it looks pretty like risotto yeah, like yeah. I want you to try this you get a little idea Yeah, very brown rice. Yeah. Okay. Has a different texture. Yeah. Normally, what we do also is that classically in India, you would add some fresh coriander or herbs and give it a nice flavor to it. I'm going to skip the herbs, add it into a different form, but I'm going to add more flavor. I'm going to add sun-dry tomatoes. Interesting. So sun-dry tomatoes, mustard, rice, yogurt, all works quite well. Again, at the very last stage, fold that in, and all you do is. a little effort to make your food look even more beautiful is to plate it down mm-hmm. and make it look nice and to get color you can put maybe some parsley yes i mean like i said i would put parsley or some mm-hmm. herbs but i'm going to add that into a different shape mm-hmm. in different form altogether you still get the flavors though so in goes in the rice there you go the rice goes in and i've got this oh, a little good. coriander mint kind of a pesto mm-hmm. but no cheese no pine nuts it is just uh, coriander is mint is a bit of garlic tiny quantity of green chili and ginger mixed up with some oil so what you get is this wonderful green oil or the flavored oil with the herbs now i know you mentioned you don't like coriander mm-hmm. so there's more mint in this Okay. But again, it's a personal preference. If you want to add a little more, you can add more. If you don't like coriander, take out the coriander altogether. And, and all give it a lot of freshness and freshness. Nice. Yes. So think of the flavors. You got the turmeric, you got the rice, you got the mustard, chicken tikka, you got the sun-dried tomatoes to give it a nice umami, and you got the lovely herbs to go around it. Very earthy. Very earthy. Mm-hmm. So instead of putting the herbs inside the rice and cooking it through, mm-hmm. I'm going to put it like a dressing around the plate. Yeah, it goes with the wild rice. I mean, this chicken tikka, although classically in India you would serve it uh, hot or warm, mm-hmm. but I also like to have chicken tikka which is cold. It has a very nice flavor. You can cut the chicken tikka into thin slices, and you can probably put it into a, a sandwich or a wrap, mm-hmm. or serve it with some uh, cherry tomatoes, some uh, rocket leaves, some arugula, a little dressing over it. It's fantastic to have on its own. That's what's great about chicken. You can always. We use it later. Anything, yes. Yeah. And then all you do is plate it up. I'm going to put three pieces of chicken, and this turns into literally a meal. And then for color, I've got these lovely leaves here. I've got uh, pea shoots. Mm-hmm. So then pea shoots, pea leaves to garnish the the plate. And the last one. There you have it. As simple. And looks beautiful. And beautiful. Again very earthy, very rustic, but I promise you when you try it it will have lots and lots of flavors to it. I believe you. It looks delicious. <laughs> Let's you try, it. try it at home. Of course, yeah. You can try it now first. Oh, I'll have to try it right now. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Time to test. I will mix it all up. Mix the rice with the herbs and have a small bite of the chicken along with the rice. So you get all the flavors mixed together. Mm. Very good. I love how the rice and the earthiness goes well together with chicken and 
the mustard kind of gives it a little bit of a zest. But what's the main flavor do you get? Is it mustard? It, it is mustard, but there's, there's more to it. It's got depth. Yeah. I mean, that's what the food does. It's got the mustard, it's got the umami of the sunbright tomatoes, it's got the herbs, little oil around it. I think it's a balance of how you put things together. It doesn't need to be chili hot. It needs to be flavorful. And the yeah. rice is very creamy. Yeah. And that's because the yogurt, there's no cheese. Yeah. So you don't feel guilty in indulging <laughs> because it's still light. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit different. I, yeah. I like how the, you know, the yogurt gave it also a different texture. I mean, you have been to our restaurant. You understand yeah. our ethos of how we modernize the food. And this is a very simple way of actually showcasing it. And something which I really hope you can actually make it at home for your wife and for your friends. No, I bet she's waiting for me to just come and do it. <laughs> but don't face any pictures when you're done. Oh well. Travis, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being a part of our guest series. Thank you so for having huge me. Huge thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Safe journey back to Canada. Thank and you. Uh, keep me posted and I'll see you in the restaurant. I will send you pictures. Please do. And for you guys, uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to try it at home for your friends and family and do not forget to tag me. So until next time, happy cooking.